Today I am privileged to have next to me Professor Andre Divenalge, political analyst at the Northwest University, with whom I am going to have a short bonbon video discussion. Now the, the theme that I am pursuing, Andre, um, is um, outer ring developments, specifically in the sense of strategy and the subject strategy that's, that's my subject for this year. You get your normal influences in a business, but sometimes these outside factors just happen. And within the last three years, in South Africa specifically, we had the COVID pandemic and now we sit in an energy crisis. Andre, my first question to you is, how severe is this energy crisis in South Africa? Uh, Prof. Jan, I think uh, from a strategy point of view, the external environment at the moment uh, is very unstable and the influence towards the economy and the business environment is severe. Mm. You referred to COVID, mm. but basically to me, the overall problem in the country is the failure of the state as state. And mm. increasingly, we are seeing patterns of institutional and political decay, mm. a system falling apart. And it's impacting on several areas of life. Transnet, the post office, the SABC, local government, provincial government, and ESCOM. And I think of all this, ESCOM yeah. probably most serious. So if, if I am a big business today in Africa or South Africa, how do I, how do I compensate? How do I plan? How do I strategize? For, for these developments? Is it doom and gloom or is there a way that, that you would say a uh, strategy can, can play a part to, to, counter, to counter the effects of this? Yes, every crisis are also presenting its opportunities. Mm. And where the state fail, we are currently seeing alternative structures developing, producing electricity, uh, working with infrastructure, housing, uh, medical care, health systems, mm. education, etc. So I think the alternative will be to create your own environment and to be as self-sufficient as possible. Okay. So I think the, the question that, that I want to ask is, can, can the problem be fixed? It seems that, we, that looking in the, the eyes of government is perhaps not the solution. Well, if you look from a government perspective and you want to solve the problem by appointing a minister of uh, electricity, that's not going to help. I believe there are easy solutions, but these solutions are going against the core ideology of the ANC. And the core ideology of the ANC is to control everything and through transformational initiatives want to deploy cadres in all strategic positions. My take on it is if you deregulate, if you open up the system for the market, mm -hmm. I believe we can solve this in probably a year or two. But going the mm -hmm. current way, we are certainly set for failure. Sure. Prof. Andre, do you think if one goes back in time, let's say five, six, seven years, and I was busy doing the strategy of a big organization, would this have been predictable? Was the scenarios already built at that stage, or, or is, this, is this a blind side effect? Early 2000s, I had the head strategic planner of ESCOM at that time at the University of the Free State. And we have listened to his scenarios. And one of the scenarios at that time more or less predicted the current situation. So yes, it was predictable, without any doubt. Yeah. But the problem is the management and the governance of this whole process mm. was problematic. Mm. And to me at the core lies political intervention in the parastatals. They should have been dealt with independently. Just very interestingly, during the late 90s, out of 60 countries, 
South Africa came number one for the production of the cheapest electricity of them all. Then we enter the Mbeki phase and our problems with ESCOM started with Tabu Mbeki. And the problem there was more or less an ANC problem. And the question they ask, what is in it for us? Mm -hmm. They want something from that deal. And the result was that the deal went the way of uh, Mudupi and Kosile, and the end result was huge, huge corruption. Yeah. And Zuma built on this to the point where the whole system is falling apart. So if I, from our business school perspective, one of the things that's close to the business school is, is agriculture um, and mining. Uh, do you feel comfortable to say uh, how did it impact possibly on the agricultural sector? Some views, experience? Did, 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 I understood that um, the agricultural sector was not quite affected by COVID, but that this energy crisis now is a much bigger effect. Well, my, my take on it is that uh, the energy crisis is a lot more serious in comparison to the COVID one when we look at the effects mm -hmm. it have on uh, both uh, the mining industry as well as agriculture. Mm -hmm. Specifically, the, the agricultural component is very severely hit because it impacts on provision of water. And I know, for example, in parts of Douglas area where I know the farm as well, mm -hmm. that this is a serious problem. But it's not only influencing the farming community. It is influencing literally every aspect of society. We are currently adjusting our lifestyles according to what people call load shedding. I think the term load shedding is no more appropriate. It's probably rather power failures we are experiencing at the moment. Mm. And to add to this problem, and that is the second bigger one, there are strong evidence of deliberate sabotage of that industry for political purposes. So what is, uh, to close up this, this bonbon, if, if we are now presenting in front of a, a board of directors of a, of a big company, what would the advice be from a scenario planning perspective? Do you need to pack up your goods and go? Or are there plans to make? Young, I think there are still plans that we can make. My starting point will be to produce my own electricity. To become as self-sufficient as possible and to connect to this self-sufficiency, a developmental role in which communities can also benefit. I think if you follow that strategy, you can benefit and you can become successful. Mm -hmm. But in short, I am not expecting the state to develop strong capacity on the short term. I'm not expecting Ramaphosa's plans with electricity to give huge results on the short term. So mm -hmm. as far as businesses are concerned, I think to a large degree they are on their own or within the limitations put forward by government. Professor Andre Divenager, thank you for your time today. Uh, I appreciate the conversation that we could have had on this theme. Thank you, Jan.